You are in your 22nd week of pregnancy, mama, five months pregnant. Can you believe it? Let's talk about what's going on this week for you and your baby and some tips and tricks for this stage of your pregnancy. I'm Bridget Tyler, and I'm your childbirth educator. I'm a birth doula and a mama, and I love providing information for parents to be confident about their pregnancy and birth and feel empowered about all their decisions. If you're new, make sure you subscribe and click the bell so you don't miss out on any educational videos that I put out just for you. Now at 22 weeks, baby is the size of a papaya from head to heel and is just breaking the one pound mark. Next time you're at the grocery store, if you hold a one pound bag of sugar, that's about the weight of your baby. No wonder you are feeling more pressure and heaviness in your pelvic floor and more pressure on your bladder, especially. With this added weight, don't forget to be doing pregnancy safe core exercises. In fact, you can do a pregnancy safe core workout with me in the video linked in the corner above. Your baby is taking up about half of the space in your belly, which means your fundal height is going to be slightly above your belly button now. Measuring your fundal height is actually one way to measure the gestational age of baby. The fundus is the top of the uterus and usually follows a typical growth pattern week by week as your baby grows within it. At your appointments with your provider, they're likely going to palpate your belly to feel for the funness and start measuring your belly using a soft tape measure. They'll start from your pubic bone and then measure to the top of the uterus. And if you're 22 weeks pregnant, then you'll measure approximately 22 centimeters. Typically, how many weeks pregnant you are will be about how many centimeters of distance between that pubic bone, which is where the bottom of your uterus is about, and your fundus. That's just a fun piece of information for you. Now, as your baby grows and more strain is put on your connective tissues, you might be dealing with pain in your pelvis. You might be feeling discomfort in the front of your pelvis where your pubic symphysis is or in the back of your pelvis where your sacroiliac joint is. And a big reason you might be feeling discomfort in these places is because this is where your pelvis moves. So this is where instability can happen and dysfunction to build Build as your body has to compensate for more weight in the front of your body. I've mentioned my prenatal fitness program several times in previous week's updates, but again, this is something I address. And if you're not feeling discomfort in your pregnancy yet, don't wait till you are to start doing something about it. But simply adding in glute strengthening exercises, pelvic floor releases, abdominal strengthening exercises, inner thigh stretches, and stability movements can help a lot along with working with a Webster certified chiropractor. Now in a few weeks, your provider will request you to do a gestational diabetes screening. Gestational diabetes occurs when blood sugars are unable to be regulated in the body, resulting in a buildup of glucose in the blood rather than it being absorbed and used by the cells. Unmanaged gestational diabetes can put you and your baby at risk and can result in your provider encouraging a 39-week induction, which you may not want. With that in mind, hopefully you've been able to eat as well as you can during pregnancy, but if not, or if you just haven't been putting that much thought into it, here are some tips to manage your blood sugars and avoid gestational diabetes. Number one, control carbohydrate intake. Diabetes is also called carbohydrate intolerance because your body isn't properly processing the carbohydrates that it's being given. Avoid refined sugars, breads, even whole grains, fruit juices or smoothies, and even an overload of fruit. When it comes to carbs, aim for dark leafy green vegetables, root vegetables, and sprouted vegetables. Think about what kind of carbs our ancestors were eating and try to eat more of those. Number two, eat more protein. Each meal should contain a palm-sized portion of protein, preferably animal protein, and you want to aim for 80 to 100 grams of protein per day. Adequate protein intake is going to help you stay full for longer and it doesn't create a big glucose spike. Number three, fill in with fat. Healthy fats are grass-fed butter, full-fat creams, cheese, whole milk, yogurt, avocados, etc. Having fat with each meal is going to help satiate you longer, manage blood sugar, and help you and your baby absorb minerals and vitamins that need fat in order to be soaked into the cells of the body. 
and four, move your body daily. So many pregnancy complications can be easily managed by balancing your blood sugars and moving your body regularly. So you can start doing those things today in preparation for your gestational diabetes screening in a couple of weeks. And I talk more about what options you have for that screening come week 24. Mama, that wraps up this week's update. Thanks for being with me in this video and I'll see you next week.